UK, but dogs and wolves. My name is John Bradshaw and I'm an anthrozoologist, which means that I study the interactions between pets and their people. The book is called In Defence of Dogs and it's about how the new science of dog behaviour, which has been growing up over the last 10, 20 years, uh, can be given to dog owners and enable them to be better friends to their pets. It was thought that dogs were wolves in cute coats and that somewhere inside a dog lurked a wild wolf that wanted to take over and dominate the household it was in. And you'll find that in quite a lot of the older books on dog behaviour. And that essentially what dogs want to be is a member of a family and that will be, for a pet dog, a human family. Dogs actually live a very different life to the way wolves live in the wild. So we have to try and uh, change people's perspective on how a dog lives because um, they have a different pack structure than a wolf does. So as we said, wolves are all about family, therefore how do dogs live? Well, <clears throat> in the wild, dogs actually live quite a solitary life. So uh, they want all they can get out of life and it, sometimes it's easier to do on your own. You get more if you don't have to share. But what they will do is they'll form loose temporary groups if they need to get something bigger and they need help to do it. They're cooperative in nature, which is why they work for us so well, is because they want to do things that get them the biggest benefit. And if that means they have to cooperate with another dog or a badger or a coyote or a person, then they'll do it. Um, <clears throat> What they do is they, they set up a fluid arrangement uh, in their social structure. So where we saw with wolves, it's pretty much mum and dad are always the ones who know how it works. Um, dogs don't do that. They, just, they attempt to seek out balance. So what they'll do is when they are formed a pack, um, is they'll try to figure out who's best at getting what they want. And for that day, that dog gets to be leader of the pack. It's never just one dog. So an example is a wolf pack in a dog pack in Italy. <clears throat> that dog pack uh, consists of around 37 dogs. They, they exist in a, a, a large dump. And um, at any point in state of time, one of nine of them will be leader of the pack. That's one third of the dogs in a dog group or a dog social structure would have the opportunity to be leader of the pack depending on what they wanted to get. So... If today we're hunting rabbits and George is the best at hunting rabbits and we're following George, but tomorrow if we're hunting rats and Fred is better at hunting rats, then Fred gets to be in charge. That's the long and short of it. Dogs do what works, including in their social arrangement. They do what they need to do to get what they want. So the reality is your dog is not sitting on the couch after you go to bed at night with a protractor figure out his next plot to take over your house, okay, regardless of the dog. There are very few dogs that seek status. Uh, they might seek resources, but not so much status, which is what dominance is all about. They do not uh, sit there and go, well, you walk through the door before me there, but I ate before you here, and um, they're not sitting there trying to figure out how to overrun your house. They're just trying to figure out how to get along in it. So we can be there uh, to help them. If your whole world as a dog is about resources, as dog owners, we are the gateway to every single resource that a dog gets. The great thing about it is your dog's never going to go down to the shop and buy a can of dog food. Okay, He's not going to walk into a, toy, a pet store and buy some toys. What he is going to do is look at you every time you come home and go, what have you got for me? Okay, So sometimes you're going to have something, sometimes you aren't. That makes you much more exciting, by the way. Um, but we just have to understand that your dog is there in an attempt to do what it can for itself. And we can help them by saying, well, you know what, I can help you out. You've just got to do what I want. And once we begin to see that this dog's behaviour is an attempt to restore balance in its environment, so it's trying to be balanced in its, its emotions, okay, it's trying to be calm and relaxed, um, and it's trying to be uh, balanced in its environment. So everything else that comes into it um, is going to create behaviours that either appease or uh, a warning for that particular 
uh, entry into the environment depending what it is or else it's going to ignore it completely which is what we want 99% of the time. Um, if we start to understand that some behaviours that dog displays that have been considered dominant are actually just uh, ritual social interactions uh, that a dog utilises to uh, ask for more personal space then we can sort of start to understand how they're living a bit more. So things like growling and barking and and uh, all these sort of disruptive behaviours we've for a very long time attempted to correct out of a dog. Okay, We've never been able to breed it out of them so we shouldn't really try to correct it out of them. We have to start to understand why it's happening and then we can change their mind about it. So if you've got a dog that likes to for example resource guard a food bowl uh, then we have to change their mind about what the food bowl means but before we can do that we have to understand that their attempts to get us away from a food bowl are about um, avoiding damaging and bad behavior so a growl is a signal it's a ritual interaction that asks somebody or something to back off um, once a dog is with another dog if they hear that growl they'll respect that personal boundary. Generally, they're not going to push their luck. Um, they don't enter that personal zone without permission. We do, however, because we think our dog should get over it and they should submit to us. But as we've said, if dominance doesn't exist, if it's a myth that's sort of been created uh, 60 years ago that's since been disproven by some very comprehensive research actually out in the wild and on dogs and not on wolves, then perhaps we have to start to understand why our dog is doing it and then find smarter ways to deal with it. <clears throat> they um, generally are very considerate of each other's personal preferences but we tend not to be considerate of their preferences. So if you are having problems with your dog um, and somebody's telling you that your dog is dominant you've got to rethink it. Okay because generally and I would say generally as in 99.99% of the time, um, it's got nothing to do with status seeking. It's got everything to do with fear and loss and that can be addressed. Um, but have a bit of respect for the dog first before you worry about just writing it off with a blanket excuse of dominance. It's unfair to your dog and it's unfair to your relationship with your dog. <clears throat>